Chapter 1. Niceness is not a free state of being polite and kind, but rather a forced state of subservience and slaving for approval. When we hear the word nice, our minds immediately light up green. Nice is good. Nice is something we should aspire to be and train kids around us to be. However, is that really true? Let us consider this. When you are told to be nice, what does it mean? Say you are going to the house of a colleague you really don't like because you think he is egotistical and too much of a show-off. You step out of the car and see this egotistical colleague has an ice sculpture of himself gracing the entrance of his home. Your face colors with distaste, but your wife or husband nudges you in the side. Remember to be nice, they chide you, causing you to immediately comport yourself and write your expression. Can you explain what happens here? You walk up the stairs into the house and you shake the egotistical colleague's hand with a smile and laugh drilly at all his jokes. Meanwhile, inside, you're rolling your eyes and wishing you could just go home. This is what it means to be nice, no? You take what you don't like and force politeness in order to fit in properly to society. When someone has vastly different views than you do or is directly insulting a particular culture, people, or profession, and you think they are being horrible, instead of putting them in their place and leaving, you must look at your plate and grit your teeth. Maybe even force a smile in order to remain nice and prove that you have manners and fit in society. Are you beginning to see the downsides of nice now? Being nice has you watching yourself, second-guessing yourself, looking at the faces of others, trying to remain acceptable. When you are being nice, you're not your true self, saying what you think and doing what you want. You are a slave to the perception people have of you. Chapter 2. Nothing bad will happen to you outside being nice model. You've probably never thought of it that way before, that nice could be a bad thing. Since childhood, it has been embedded in your brain that niceness equals goodness. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Be nice. Santa wants to know if you're naughty or nice. Don't you want to be on Santa's nice list? We all grew up this way. It was known. Being nice got you good things. Love, acceptance, sometimes even presence. So we all learn to swallow up our true feelings and put up an act to try to please everyone around us. This is not to say that it is good to be mean and say horrible, rude things to people, and to do as you please regardless of how it hurts other people. No, that is not the opposite of nice. Regardless of what Santa thinks, the opposite of nice is not naughty. The opposite of nice is simply not nice. When people do terrible things to you and you're done swallowing those things and you snap, what do you say? I'm done playing nice? Well, shouldn't that tell you everything you need to know? Essentially, what you're saying is, I'm done not being true to myself and putting myself in severe discomfort just to please other people. Chapter 3. Being not nice is being true to yourself. Being not nice means staying assertive and confident. You are not afraid to voice a contrary opinion, chastise a wrongdoer, or say no. Being nice has you doing the opposite of these things and pretending to be someone you are not. Being nice has caused us to feel unseen by loved ones because we've been playing nice. Your parents don't know that you disagree with several of their core values because you've never told them your views. When they say they love you, you can't help but feel this is a lie because they don't even know you. They see the image of you that you have shown them because you want their approval. In a bid to appear nice, we shelf our true selves and try to adopt an identity that pleases everyone. When you keep playing nice, you're simply molding yourself to fit into the space society has created, forcing yourself to be regular and conform to what the general public says is good. It's unsociable to raise your head and speak when you disagree with what is displayed. We end up being ruled by fear of rejection and a hunger for approval when we play nice. We find ourselves apologizing when in our own right. The urge to be nice to everyone stems from the fear of rejection and a need for approval. Some people won't even be able to make objections and sit in the wrong seat or leave the drink and get a drink somewhere else. This is what niceness does to people. Not nice means that you choose to be polite. You decide to help. You know it is a decision to say yes or say no. 
So when you do good, it comes from a place of power, a place of will. It is good to be good, but only when it's okay with you to do good. Being nice does not come out of goodness or high morals. It comes out of a fear of displeasing others and receiving their disapproval. It's driven by fear, not virtue. Aziz Gazapura Chapter 4 To break out of the cage of niceness, you must make a conscious decision to be less nice, establish your boundaries, and go after what you want. First, it is important to remind ourselves that being not nice does not mean being mean or a downright horrible human being. It just means learning to do what's good for you. In order to be free of the niceness cage, you have to take three steps. Decide not to be nice. Breaking out of the niceness cage is going to take a conscious decision. You have to make up your mind to stop playing nice. You have to make up your mind to stand up for yourself, to say what you want, to enforce your rights. Do the not nice things that you usually shy away from. It is not enough to simply convince yourself you want to do these things. You have to actually do these things. You should make a list of all the not nice things that would improve you. This list is your bill of rights. It's really not difficult to do. It's the little things like, I will speak to my colleague about how I don't like that she always takes half of my donut when she walks by my desk the next time she does it. I get hungry too. Or, I'm going to say no to my neighbor the next time she asks me to watch her kids. I have work I brought home and my kids are a handful already. Stuff like that. Write them down and when you write them, make sure to do them. Work through the internal backlash afterwards. After you do these not nice things, it is inevitable that you would end up feeling guilty. You have been raised this way. It is all that you know. It has been fed to you from childhood so your brain would have trouble accepting it. Imagine that new information came to you that 2 plus 2 now equals 6. Would you be comfortable writing that on a test? When you can see clearly that everyone is still writing down 4? Absolutely not. After the test, you'd feel so dumb. You'd be certain you did it wrong. It's the exact same way when you're breaking rules you have been following all your life. Afterwards, you would catch yourself feeling guilty and second-guessing your decision, but you must push through. Do not allow the thoughts in your head from years of social conditioning to break your resolve. Continue to practice not nice. If you can consistently follow these three steps, you will find that you're becoming more assertive, more confident, more happy, more definitely. More happy and definitely more authentic and true to yourself. Once you have successfully done this, you need to make a focus point on two very important parts of being not nice. Establishing boundaries. Boundaries are a very important part of living your life as a happy, successful person. The example of the coworker who continually steals half of your donut is a breach of your boundaries, and that is why it upsets you deep down. Establishing boundaries is making it clear to each person what they can or cannot do based on how comfortable you are with them. For example, your significant other could tap your bum and cheer you up, but you would not appreciate a colleague doing that. This is an example of what boundaries are like for different people in your life. A lot of us, however, don't know how to establish boundaries and ignore our discomfort, allowing others to step all over us. It is important to set boundaries for people. This is a not nice step that is vital to your happiness. Going for what you want. Too many of us are afraid to go after what we want, even in simple situations like getting up in a party to go get extra helpings from the buffet. Overthinking and worrying what people think of you and your food choices. Or being too afraid to approach the person you're romantically interested in regardless of if they say no. It is important to learn not to fear rejection. If you try and you get a no, then you know that you tried. You won't lay in bed thinking about what if. Make a conscious effort to go after what you want. Chapter 5 It is essential to learn to say no, despite what social conditioning on niceness will tell you in life. The inability to say no is a very normal thing in our society. You're rushing down to the elevator. You have 10 minutes left of your lunch break to properly utilize with a donut from downstairs. Your colleague runs up to you just before you hit the elevator with a pile of documents. She dumps them with you. Could you please give these to Bobby down in accounting? Thanks! Your mouth is hanging open as she rushes off back to her office, leaving you there. You don't have much time, definitely no time for a detour, but you can't stop her and say no. 
you drag yourself to accounting instead and end up missing your lunch break window. By stopping her as she tried to leave and saying, no, you wouldn't have been nice, but you can't help being nice. Saying no to things that will ultimately inconvenience you is part of self-development. Another example, a friend asks if they can use your house for a party on the weekend. You know you'll be put out, but you can't say no. That wouldn't be nice. So you end up spending your weekend miserable at a party you don't want. Your inability to say no will have you living your life burdened by someone else. Refusal to stand up for yourself will only lead to a life of burdens and unhappiness. When you say no, it liberates you. You will find that you feel so much freer. That is freedom from the cage of niceness. When you are finally free, You'll look back and wonder what all the fuss was about. You'll be surprised that when you say no, more people will take it in stride than would get upset. More people would say, okay, and find an alternative. You must understand that it is okay to say no when you don't want to and when you can't. To say yes is a choice, not a prerequisite. Did you know? The eight main areas of self-care include physical, psychological, emotional, social, professional, environmental, spiritual, and financial. Most people don't think about it holistically. Chapter 6. When you are finally free of the social conditioning of niceness, you will find your true self shining through. The results will be undeniable if you can get through the ups and downs of your not-nice training. You would be your most faithful, most accessible, and most authentic self. You would have no problem saying no when it's not comfortable for you. You would have no problem saying what you want to say. You won't feel uncomfortable exercising your rights. You would be okay with going after what you want. You would be powerful and assertive, but still kind and polite. The difference is it would be from an authentic and powerful place of choice. When you choose to do what is best for you, you will see a newer version of yourself shine through. By being your true self, you would finally feel seen, and when your loved ones look at you, they will see the real you, not some carefully crafted character you tried to portray. When they say they love you, you would believe them because you know that they have seen who you truly are and love that person. Being true to yourself by being not nice can help you build better relationships based on openness, honesty, and authenticity. It would help you to do better business, be firmer, get more work done, and access performance properly and criticize without feeling not nice. The love would shine through. Discovering yourself will also help you connect better in relationships. Not playing nice and being authentic is the key to building your life the proper way. There is only one, you, and the way you think is unique to you. So you should not force yourself to fit into the cast by playing nice. Live true to yourself and be happy. Conclusion We all consider niceness to be a good thing, but in reality it's one of the worst things we have been considered to practice. Niceness robs us of our ability to be our true selves for fear of being disliked or disapproved. Practicing being not nice, however, would make you assertive and powerful while remaining kind as your authenticity will shine through in honesty. And people seeing this will trust in you and your kindness more than when you play nice but deep down prefer not to be. Try this. The next time you feel bad after practicing being not nice, make a joke out of it in your mind. For example, oh no, I wonder how Karen feels after I said no to taking care of her kids. She probably felt bad. Hail and brimstone, the world is ending. This would make you laugh and see how silly your overthinking is.